Hello, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the French method of long division, which is an efficient, intuitive, and flexible algorithm or process for showing how to divide a value evenly. And it's a nice alternative to the British method, which kind of looks like stairs stepping down. Okay, so the problem to start with that we've got is 112 divided by 8. So the first step in this process is to write the dividend or the number that's going to be divided, and then it's going to be separated out into groups of 8. So think of this little L shape as, as though you had a pile of 112 objects, and you're coming in and you are scooping out, like this, groups of 8. And it's your job to determine how many groups of eight there are in that 112. So I extend this line down the center, and that helps to keep things organized. Now, I'm going to be using multiples of eight, and I'm going to be taking away multiples of eight or groups of eight from this 112. Um, it's a good idea to, when you're first learning how to do this, to use values that are easy to subtract, that are multiples that you know offhand multiples like times 2, times 5, times 10, etc. All right, so I need a number less than 100 that is a multiple of 8. Well, I could say 10 times 8. That's an easy one to remember. That's 80. And I'm going to subtract the 80 off of that 112. The result is 32. 32 Separate into groups of eight, that would be four groups of eight. And I'm going to use a little bit of color here to show what's going on. The remainder now at this point is zero, which tells me that eight goes into 112 perfectly. And 10 and four together, I had 10 groups of eight plus another four groups of eight makes 14 groups of 8 total that I was able to make. So in this organization, in this table, it's essentially a table, the elements that you can see are the following. The 112, that number there, is called the dividend, which means the number being divided. The 8 is called the divisor. That's the size of the groups that you're separating out. The 14 is called the quotient. And that's how many groups you were able to form. And this zero is the remainder. In this case, the remainder is zero, which means that eight goes into 112 evenly, <clears throat> with none left over. So 112 divided by eight is 14. Now let's do another one. 27 divided out or separated into groups of four. Extend that center line down. So I'm thinking of multiples of 4 that are less than 27. If I did times 10 again, that would be too high. That would be 40. So I'm going to go for times 5. 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract. That's 7. I can get one more group of 4 out of that 7. And that leaves me with a remainder of 3. So at this point, because my remainder is 3 here, I could write the solution. 27 divided by 4 is 6 remainder 3, like that, if that's what I was being asked for. Or I can actually take it one step further, because 3 divided into groups of four 
is three quarters, or three divided by four, it can represent it as a fraction, which is also 0.75. So flexibility with number comes in here that depending on where you are in your mathematical learning, you could do, write it with six remainder three, or you could write Three and three quarters. That's also true. Or you could write it in decimal notation, 6.75. All of these three forms are true statements, they're true values for the result of 27 divided into groups of four. That's one of the things that I like about this method is that it, it, it allows students to see the different ways that numbers can be represented. Okay, let's do another one. 492 divided by 8. So I'm going to represent that 492 dividend separated into groups of 8. Extend the center line down. I'm not sure how long it'll go, but there. Okay, so I'm thinking multiples of 8 that are less than 492. Well, if I did 8 times 5, that's 40. So 8 times 50 is 400. So I've just multiplied 5 by 10 and 40 by 10 to get that one. So that's where the flexibility and the intuitive part of this process comes in. Uh, let's see, the remainder for that now is 92. So I could do another 10 groups of 8, which is 80. Remainder is 12 now. I can take away another group of 8 from that. Remainder is 4. So at this point, I could state my solution as 61 groups with a remainder of 4. Or I can continue one more step and say I've got 4 divided into groups of 8, which is the same as 0.5, because 4 is half of 8. And so my total value in decimal notation is 61.5. That's my quotient. Okay, so I could have stopped right there at 61 remainder four, depending on where I am in the division process, learning about remainders, etc. All right, another one, 124 divided by six. So again, dividend, divisor, that's the size of the groups. Well, 6 goes into 12 twice, so 6 times 20 is 120. Remainder is 4. 4 sixths. I could consider that as a fraction, 4 over 6, which is the same as 2 over 3. which I also know is 0.6 repeating. So in this case, my quotient is 20.6 repeating. And oh, over here as well, I got rid of that extra four. So in terms of the organization of the solutions, if this was being graded, for example, then a teacher would be able to see lots of different components. <clears throat> you could look for what are the multiples that the student is using? Are they using common reference, like times five, times 10, times 20? Or are they using other values? 
And if you see that there's a pattern that they're always going for the same values for their multiples, you could suggest ways to be more efficient in their work. And then in the end, you can see the total as well at the bottom here. So the solution or the marking of this process would be looking at it from clockwise, starting with the dividend. Okay, I realized here I didn't write the solution. Oh, yes, I did. So there's these three here. Okay. Okay, let's look at another element of the flexibility of this. So let's say we were doing 532 divided by 9. So 532 separated into groups of 9. Extend that middle line down. So I look at 9 times, let's see, if I did 9 times 5, that's 45. So 9 times 50 is 450. And subtract, that's 82. I can get 9 groups of 9 out of 82. And that leaves me one left over. So my remainder is 1. 1 ninth, 1 divided by 9, is in decimal notation, 0 0.1 repeating. So my quotient is 59.1 repeating. That's the sum of these three values. So I could have stopped. I wasn't comfortable or the students were not comfortable with this conversion of fractions to decimals yet, you could stop right there and say that uh, one answer to this problem is 59 and a remainder of 1. Okay, so that's an intermediate step. Now, Another way that gets me to the same place in the end is 532 divided by 9 is to consider what's the next multiple above. So we don't have to always go for a value that's lower than that dividend. Initially in this first one I did 9 times 50, but if I go to the next multiple of 10, if I go 60, 9 times 60 is 540. 9 times 6 is 54, times 10, 540, and then subtract. So the process is the same. The difference when I subtract 532 minus 540, I get negative 8. Negative 8 over 9 represents that remainder. So I've got 60 minus 8 ninths. Well, 60 minus 8 ninths is 59 and 1 ninth. Which, in decimal form, is the same value that we got previously. So this is where the flexibility piece comes in. Uh, a student can choose different multiples and they will still, it is possible for them to end up at the same result. So you could ask students purposely to use two different groups of multiples to show that their answer is correct, or to verify their solution. 